in this, in this lab, we give you a chance to compare the effects of the jump to label and an MCR zone. The jump to label is real obvious. In rung zero, we have a JSR jump to subroutine. And in a minute, we'll look at the logic that we have in program file five, in ladder five. In rung one, we have a true if on, on input one and a jump to zero. Now remember, zero, uh, 35, it doesn't matter what number you use. You just need a target to jump to. The labels are arbitrary. When we jump to zero, we're going to skip rungs two and three. In other words, we have a timer that's free running every two seconds. And as long as it's timing, it turns on the output bit, output zero. When we jump across those two rungs, it's as if they're waiting for the next program scan to update. In rung five and six, we have two rungs of logic, basically identical to rungs two and three, only these two rungs are in an MCR zone. In an MCR, MCR zone, when the rungs are being, so to speak, skipped, the rungs are still scanned, but the outputs are reset to zero. So no matter what the state is of the rung, true or false, the rungs are treated as false, and the outputs are reset. They're non-retentative. Now remember that non-retentative means that they have a true and a false execution. A TON instruction and an OTE has a true and a false execution. If these were retentative outputs, like a uh, output latch OTL, they would not be reset because they don't have a false execution. So basically, when you're in the MCR zone, if the logic is being treated other than normal, the outputs are just turned off if they're non-retentative. And then in ladder five, which we execute from the JSR in rung zero, we have the suspend instruction. Okay, let's let's take another a better look at this logic. In ladder five, we have a timer with an output rung right below it. So you can see we have the same piece of code, a free running timer, timer timing bit which is controlling an output bit. So we have the same logic three times in this lab. One set is between a jump and label, another set in an MCR zone, and the other the subject of a suspend code. Now, the suspend suspends everything in the processor, not just that code. But the reason that we use an identical piece of code is we want you to see the difference in the effects or effect of a jump to label versus an MCR versus a suspend. In an earlier lab exercise, you were able to observe the behavior of ladder logic between a jump and a label, either jumping across it or jumping back to execute it again. The normal use of jump to label is to jump forward, not jump backwards. But we did show you you could jump backwards. In this lab, you are going to compare all the methods of program control. Jump to subroutine, jump to label, MCR zone control, temporary end, and suspend. So we, we had you open ladder five and then switch on input zero to the on state. As soon as the timer data type had accumulated something, we had you switch input zero to the off state and then answer these questions. Is the timer data type still accumulating? No. Anyway, you don't see the value changing. What is the accumulate value with input zero in the off state? You wrote something down. 164 happened to be what I had. Now in this next step, you have to pay very close attention to the accumulate register value. In my case, it was 164. So keeping my eyes on that, so I can remember the new value, the instance it starts updating again, 
You switch on input 0 to the on state and then answer these questions. What was the first accumulate value when the TON instruction resumed instruction of the timer data type T40? It had to be 256 for me. Was it the previous value plus 1? No. We had you continue switching states of input 0 while observing the accumulate value. I had you try short intervals within the off state and longer intervals in the off state. Did you see any relationship between the interval of the off state and the difference between the value at the beginning of the off state and the value at the end of the off state? Yes. While in the off state, right click on the timer timing bit and run to and toggle it off. Is the rung still true? No. Is memory location, now I say no, it appears to be untrue, but remember if you're not actually scanning the code, the rung is neither true or false. So really, that wasn't meant to be a trick question. I should really have asked the question, is rung 2 still appear to be true? No. Is memory location output 2 still in the on state? Yes it is. What conclusions can you draw from the behavior of logic in a subroutine when the JSR to the subroutine is inactive? The logic is not being executed therefore the apparent results are not updated in the right output instructions addressed memory locations meaning the timer doesn't appear to be updating and if the wrong is false, it doesn't turn the output off. Remember, we had you toggle a true instruction to the opposite state and it did not change the state of the output bit. Do you think it is wise programming to put timer instructions in subroutines that are not always being scanned by the processor? No. With all inputs in the off state are either the jump to label, rung 1, or the MCR zone start, rung 4, true? No. Observe the timer instructions that address T4 1 within the jump to label zone and T4 2 within the MCR zone. Are they both functioning in the same way? No. That's your first clue, of the difference between a true on a jump to label and a true on the beginning of an MCR zone. Switch input 1 to the on state while observing the timer instruction addressing T41 and the following rung that controls output 0. Then do the same thing with switch 2. Put it to the on state, observe the instruction that's addressing T42 and the following rung that controls output 1. When a jump forward to label is active, the logic between the two rungs is not scanned. True or false? That's true. The logic in the label rung is not scanned. True or false? That's false. Remember, a label is just a marker. It's an identifying point and has no effect on that rung. From your observation in the previous lab exercise, in, in where you used a jump backwards to label. When a jump backwards to label is active, the logic between the two rungs is not scanned. True or false? False. It's actually rescanned every time it jumps back. When the rung containing the MCR zone start instruction is true, the logic between the start zone rung and the end of the zone rung is scanned and behaves normal. True or false? true. What is the difference in the state of the logic that resides between a jump forward to label when it is active and an MCR zone when it is active? Just the opposite effect. A jump forward skips the logic as if it weren't even there while an active MCR zone the logic is executed normally. So if the beginning of the MCR zone is true it executes everything perfectly normal. Rung 9 is available to use to reset everything. While watching any active timer on instructions, that means any, switch input 4 on and then off. 
switch input 3 to the on state and then use input 4 to reset the timer data types. Did the timer data types reset? No. Did the rung with the resets go true? Yes. That was a temporary end. Whenever you initiate a temporary end, it treats it as if it is literally the end of the program. So you could say that when a, when a temporary end is active, all the rest of the logic is skipped. It updates the I.O. and goes back to rung zero. So a jumped label skips everything between the jump and the label. A temporary end skips everything to the real end of the program. So you can have many temporary ends and initiate them for troubleshooting purposes. With input 0 and input 2 on and all the others in the off state and observing any of the timer instructions, switch input 5 to the on state, what occurred? The timer instructions stopped updating, stopped accumulating. It suspended the entire program, the, the whole processing scan went into a suspend state and holds right where it's at. It also will display a su suspend code because you could have more than one suspend instruction in different places in the program and if you want to see which one actually suspended the scanning process you can go look in the S2 file and read to see what the code was. We're still in the suspend state. Look at the states of the inputs. Toggle the switches while watching the logic. Do they change state? No. The only action that can bring the processor out of the suspend state is to drop down the list next to suspend and select a different mode. Word S2 colon 7 stores the suspend identification integer which can be found by opening the S2 file and clicking on the debug tab. Try it while the program is suspended. Since it is difficult to tell the difference between 0 and 0 or 0 and 0, edit your suspend rung to have an ID of 739 and try it again. In other words, <laughs> don't leave the suspend code 0. You can't tell whether it did anything or not. So put something in there that you recognize.